Hello, my name is uh, Robert Cahoon. I'm the campaign director for the 40 Days for Life campaign in London. And first of all, I just want to tell you about what the 40 Days for Life campaign is and then talk about the problem of abortion and how our campaign can be a solution to that problem. And then also talk about um, some of the recent events we've seen in London and also some of the signs of hope and signs of opportunity for the future as well. Well, 40 Days for Life is a locally organised community initiative encouraging Christians to pray and fast for an end to abortion. And in our last campaign during Lent this year, we united with more than 250 cities around the world. First of all, there are three components to this campaign. The first is prayer and fasting, encouraging Christians to pray and fast for an end to abortion. The second part is through having a peaceful vigil, having a peaceful vigil outside an abortion facility, one that is peaceful, prayerful and legal. In London, that was in central London, outside the British Pregnancy Advisory Service. And the third part of the campaign is to take a dynamic, upbeat and positive pro-life message to all parts of the community through media representation, through door-to-door advocacy, through getting involved in festivals, through organising events. And 40 Days for Life started in 2007. And since that time, there have been more than 1,600 campaigns organised in more than 440 cities around the world. I first felt uh, called to be involved in it since September 2010, and we've had four campaigns in London. And the results have been absolutely amazing from the campaigns that we've seen. The mission and purpose of the organisation is to, to save lives, inspire hearts and minds, and impact eternal souls. And all the, all the campaigns combined, we've seen more than 5,900 lives saved from abortion. These are women who've been scheduled for an abortion and through the love and compassion of those praying outside clinics have changed their minds and chosen life for those babies. We've seen 23 abortion clinics around the world close. We've also seen 67 abortion workers leave their jobs, the most famous of which was a lady called Abby Johnson, who was Planned Parenthood Employee of the Year in America. And she decided that um, uh, through her conscience, she became a pro-life advocate, realising her involvement in the abortion industry uh, wasn't something that she wanted to carry on with and decided to tell her story. Um, She wrote a book and it was in the top 10 best-selling books in the New York Times list. Um, It's called Unplanned by Abby Johnson. I'll really mention a few aspects of our local campaign in in London. In London, we've seen uh, more than 30 women who were scheduled to have an abortion change their minds, and we've taken them to a pro-life counselling centre offering real help and support for those women. Recently, I did an interview with some of the two women who chose life for their babies and also one who had an abortion. And listening to those stories, um, it was clear that it was through the feeling of having no choice that was the main reason that they were going for that appointment in the first place. But our work has also seen a lot of challenges um, this year, that we've seen uh, a lot of media intimidation from our campaign um, and also counter-protest as well. If you look at at the history of social reform, whether it be from William Wilberforce and the ending of slavery, the black civil rights movement, or solidarity in Poland. I believe that 40 Days for Life is very much along the same lines as those particular movements, because our aim and focus is the ending of abortion. And I know with our campaign, we've got the opportunity to make history, to save lives, inspire hearts and minds, and impact eternal souls as well. We know that our campaign in London is just a year old, and in that same time, we've gone from one campaign to seven campaigns, really seeing a paradigm shift and signs of new hope in the pro-life activities in our country, with massive opportunities as well. And I know that we can really move mountains with the work that we're doing. Perhaps if I told you in 1989 
um, when communist governments began to collapse in Eastern Europe, leading to the end of communism. If I told you in 1982 that communism would be over within a decade, you'd probably think that I was a lunatic or, or perhaps deeply deluded. But we know that with the domino effect and with the great communications that we have these days, that things can happen very, very quickly. And when abortion falls, what a huge fall it will be. And we've seen really great signs of hope in America recently with the closing of many abortion clinics. We've seen plans of the defunding of Planned Parenthood on the local level, a federal investigation of Planned Parenthood, and exposure of scandals in the abortion industry. It was the second day of our campaign in London that there was a big story in the Daily Telegraph showing the crisis of sex selection abortions that were happening in the UK and seeing that consciences were responding to that news story very quickly. And recently, Lila Rose from Live Action predicted that there would be Nuremberg-style trials after the end of abortion. But in order to look at the solution, we have to look at the problem first of all. Because at the present in the United Kingdom, we have a crisis of epidemic levels that's left millions of men and women physically and emotionally wounded. In the UK alone, a country that has respected the right to life for centuries, there are over 200,000 abortions every year. Since 1967, that figure has been 7 million in total in our nation. And children have been told a lie about sexual freedom without being warned about the long-term consequences of promiscuity. And as a result, we've got teenage pregnancies at epidemic levels, sexually transmitted diseases at alarming levels. And all the political parties have taken a favour, um, a position in favour of abortion. And Britain continues to export and promote abortion around the world, paying millions of pounds through taxpayers' money. The Department of International Development spent £350 million in 2009 to 2010. And Andrew Mitchell, the International Development Secretary, said that reproductive rights, a pseudonym for abortion, was one of the government's priorities to promote around the world. Well, how can our work be a solution to this problem? We also in London have the headquarters of International Planned Parenthood Federation and Mary Stokes International. The IPPF is an organisation with all its affiliates around the world responsible for the murder of 1.4 million children in 2009. IPPF being supportive of China's one-child policy where there's 35,000 abortions, every, forced abortions in China every single day. And again, our media have taken a position overwhelmingly in favour of abortion saturating the, the airwaves with biased information and casting pro-lifers in a negative light. So this could be a, an opportunity for despair or, or profound pessimism. But we know that we are called to do everything possible. And Edmund Burke once said that all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And one man said, woe to you if you do not succeed in defending life. And our country has also turned away from God as well. It could be a moment of despair, but there is a solution. And what does that mean right now? Well, in the midst of that darkness, there are many, many people waking up in the United Kingdom and mobilising in record numbers. When I first started our campaign, I didn't think that very many people would get involved, just two or three. Um, but we know that abortions don't happen in the Parliament they don't happen in the law courts. They don't, happen, they don't happen in schools. They happen in the local communities. And abortion ends when local communities say that there were ends. And because people are, are mobilising in record numbers with our campaign, there are, really, there are great signs of hope. Abortion can end, and it's a matter of when and not if. And I think with the ending of abortion, we'll see a revival like never before. We've seen the exponential growth with our campaign. It was started in the US in 2007. And from that time, from starting in Bryan College 
station in Texas, that it's gone all around the world to 12 countries in five years, to over 440 cities as well. Knowing that abortion clinics are closing across America, hearing that abortion clinics have closed in California, knowing that if they closed in California, there's absolutely no reason why they can't close in Britain as well. And we know that with God, all things are possible as well. We've mobilised over half a million people with our campaign in just five years. And I think there's really great signs for hope as well. Gandhi once said that there were four stages in campaigning. First of all, they ignore you. Secondly, they ridicule you. Thirdly, they intimidate you. And fourthly, they persecute you. And we've seen all four of those stages in our campaign in London. Of course, the fifth stage is you win. Um, We've seen all parts of those stages in our campaign in London. We've seen consciences uh, arise and awaken across our land as well. And very recently in our local campaign, uh, we had a national campaign of media intimidation against our work. That only brought more publicity to what we're doing and brought more people involved. The next step was um, that the abortion providers started fundraising because of our presence, our prayer vigil outside the the centre. That only brought uh, donations towards a pro-life counselling centre. Uh, We organised a a similar campaign called Pro-Lifers Raise Double and raised £25,000 for a local counselling centre. So that brought us some more money and support. The next stage was we had a prayer vigil with the bishop, which 400 people came to. I think the largest pro-life event in London for quite some time. They organised a counter-protest at that event with 300 people um, protesting a prayer vigil. It was uh, the most extraordinary evening that the national media turned up. And um, again, once again, it it only brought more people to our prayer vigil. More people got involved over that time as well. So we've got great plans for the future. The focus and mission is to see the ending of abortion, that we want to captivate and inspire the minds and hearts of young people. We need professional medical clinics to provide alternatives to the abortion services. And we need to make abortion unthinkable, provide hope and healing to those who have suffered abortions, and engage artists with creative ways of communicating a culture of life in order to bring a growing consciousness of the humanity of the unborn child. So I really invite you, perhaps you're being called to start one of our campaigns um, in your city, Um, to get involved with our work, um, both on the spiritual level and also on the organisational level as well. So thank you very much indeed.